right, so you just got back from Brazil. You won the Brasileiros. So tell us, tell us what it's like for you. Man, it was amazing. It was um, one of the most special moments in my career thus far. Um, you know, competing in Brazil for me is is just really special because, you know, that's where, like, I started really seeing jiu-jitsu was in Brazil. Um, you know, first off, being here in Oklahoma in the U.S. when I was a kid, especially at that time, there was, you know, hardly any high-level jiu-jitsu in the U.S. And, you know, there was no, like, YouTube. Um, there was only maybe some couple VHS tapes out there. So, like, everyone was almost mythical, you know. Uh, all the high level guys, you would know their names and hear about them, but maybe they've only seen like one or two matches or little clips of them. And so, you know, the first time I went to Brazil was in 1999. I was 16 years old and I competed in the world championships. And that kind of like just started off this every year, you know, going to Brazil to to learn, train and compete and uh, at the world. And I started going more and more as I got older. Um, you know, spending like a month there and uh, trying to do more tournaments there. And, you know, I just, I just love competing in Brazil. I love the feeling of, you know, their energy. And I mean, it's, it's a much bigger sport there. Um, you know, they, they, they've, uh, you know, it's, it's like their culture, you know, uh, almost like soccer, you know, they they, you know, do their chants, you know, uh, all the team have their banners and their flags. You know, I think back to Ted today, whenever he was in his prime competing, he used to have all the kids from the favela come in buses and they would beat on the drums. You know, I think back to all the memorable matches that I've seen, you know, um, back from, you know, 2000 Worlds, whatever. I was just a juvenile and I won uh, two medals in the juvenile division. And then I watched BJ Penn win the Worlds as a black belt. And I was like, man, I'm going to be the next one to do that, um, you know, as an American. And, and, you know, just all those memorable matches, you know, and, and, and then all my memorable, you know, experiences there personally, um, you know, just competing and going through that. And, and now going back there as a black belt, you know, to whenever I used to go there and just be in awe of the black belts. And now, you know, being one of those black belts down there that you know, um, you know, and, and winning, you know, and, um, you know, when I won in 2007, I won the Brasileiro. That was like extremely special moment for me. Um, you know, I never won that tournament at any of the lower belts. And then I won it, uh, as a black belt and became the first non-Brazilian to win it. And, you know, it's just, it, it, it feels so good to compete. And then of course, obviously win down there. And, um, you know, so this year, I was very motivated to go back. I hadn't been there since 2010. Um, so, you know, I decided, especially with the way the schedule was with with Worlds and Metamoris and then ADCCs coming up afterwards, uh, you know, I have a lot of big things that kind of kick off from the middle of the year on into the end of the year. So I thought it would be smarter to maybe set out some of the tournaments um, in the beginning of the year and save up for what I was really motivated for. And I was extremely motivated to go back to Brazil and have, you know, that experience one more time of, of you know, fighting down there and feeling that energy. And, you know, in my mind, I was also thinking that, you know, this might be one of the last times that I go and really go hard, you know, as uh, uh, an adult at the adult level, um, you know, being now that I'm about to turn 30 and, you know, I have a couple good more years left. Um, you know, this could be one of the last ones. So I, I just wanted to go down there and go, you know, absolute weight class, everything I have. And, and uh, that's what I was motivated to do. And it's a perfect time, you know, warm up, have about a month, then go Worlds and then Metamoris and everything else. So uh, it, it just worked out perfectly. I was super motivated. And uh, one of my students went with me. He was a brown belt. Um, you know, and so we went down and, and, uh, man, it just, it just came together beautifully. Uh, you know, we had a, a near flawless trip. Um, uh, you know, the travel was perfect. We hooked up with my good friend, uh, Rodrigo Pagani, who, uh, runs the Hibeto Jiu Jitsu team in Brazil. And, uh, so we went to Rio first for a few days and we stayed in Niteroi at his place. 
and uh, got some good training there. Um, you know, had a good time, went to the beach, just hang out, enjoy, enjoy Brazil. Uh, actually got to do a, uh, a little like, um, interview special with Sensei Sport TV, um, which is like, you know, almost like, uh, the Brazil ESPN, you know, it was like national channel. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, just like that sort of stuff was like really cool because, you know, the only, the last time I had been, went to Brazil was in 2010. And that was the first time I had went there after I was a world champion. And so that time in 2010 was the first time I ever had like Brazilian fans approaching me, you know, and thinking back to whenever I was a kid and being in awe of the Brazilians, you know, who were winning and, and competing at the world and, you know, the, like the mythical guys that you would never get to see. And then 2010, I would go there and I remember like, being at the Brasileiro and some of the the Brazilian like teenagers coming up to me and say, oh, can I get a picture with you and things like that. And I was just like, what, really? It almost was like weird, you know? And then, you know, since then I've been able to accomplish more and, and make more of a name for myself. And and now, you know, Sport TV's, you know, uh, asking to do a, you know, a special with me. And, and it was just a really cool, like almost surreal feeling, like almost unbelievable, like, wow, like, okay, uh, you know, this is gonna, you know, feel a little weird. Like, um, I, it was just, it was just super cool. You know, it was like life came full circle, you know? And, uh, you know, so we had a great time. Everything was perfect. Then we go to Sao Paulo and, uh, you know, then it's tournament time when, and, you know, the hotel we're at, everything was just, was perfect. The vibes, the energy was good and we were ready to go. And uh, my student, he started off the day Saturday uh, winning his division, he had four matches and three submissions. Um, submitted the guy in the finals, like did beautiful. I uh, was super proud of him, and uh, he became my first student to to ever win the Brasileiro. Um, you know, so he won the brown belt master medium heavy division, and um, and so you know, I was super happy for him. And then it was like, okay, now it's my turn. Like, let's go. Everything is just falling into place. And so Saturday was the absolute, um, and uh, you know, obviously absolute in Brazil, it's stacked. And there was around, uh, it was like in the 40s, almost 50 people um, in the black belt absolute. Tons of tough guys, uh, you know, all like the the medium heavy and and up guys were in the absolute. Uh, you know, so like the last two year champions were in there. Um, Nivaldo was last year's absolute champion. He was in it. Noguera was 2011 absolute champion. He was in it. Um, Tarsus was in it. Sacconi, uh, Joao Hosha, uh, obviously Evangelista was in it. Uh, Orlando Sanchez, huge guy, also an American. He was in it. Um, tough guy from the mat, Paulo Tarcicio was in it. Like just everybody that was big was in it, you know, the, the heavier guys. And, um, you know, so I was like, I was pumped. I was like, man, I can't wait. You know, there's going to be so many good matches here, um, you know, and, and so things kick off. And I felt just supercharged. I was like, you know, so inspired being in Brazil. And, you know, I just wanted to have a great performance. I was feeling so confident and like I, I, I hit I hit a new level of of focus that I never really, you know, I, I've had some good performances where I was in the zone, but this time was, I think I was in a whole higher level of the zone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everything just started going off, off right. You know, my first match, uh, you know, I always like to open up my game and just attack and just go, you know, I don't really put together too much of a strategy in the first couple matches. I just want to make, you know, fill my grips and, and, uh, you know, kind of play a little bit. Cause you know, usually like they bracket it to where the harder guys are gonna be a, a couple uh, matches into the division. So I, I wasn't familiar with my first two opponents. Um, uh, but, you know, so I open up my first match, uh, you know, I got way ahead on the point and then I was able to submit the guy uh, with like a mounted X choke, um, probably right about eight, nine minutes into the match. Uh, which I like. I like to. I don't like to have too fast matches because then you're kind of, 
you might not break your first wind, you know. So um, got that out of the way. Second round match, uh, I nearly submitted the guy. I, the, the match ended with an arm bar, but uh, I won on points. So it was like 12 to 2. Um, you know, so I was getting all my dominant positions, feeling really good with my game. You know, I was mixing up, playing on top and bottom, you know, and, uh, and then we got to the quarterfinals and the quarterfinals, you know, is where things start to get a little tougher. Um, uh, so it was the final of my page and, um, and it was my first heart, like really hard match. Um, I, I thought it might've been, uh, Orlando Sanchez, real big guy, but he ended up losing to the guy that I faced. Um, Paulo Tarcicio is a really tough like checkmate guy who has a judo background and he actually took Orlando down Orlando's like 250 pounds you know so I knew he was a really strong guy and he was actually a former Brazilian champion uh, in his weight class and um, and so I've been aware of his game I've seen him but this was the first time that I was ever gonna get to face him so you know I didn't want to start behind by two points so I got my guard game going and um, you know, felt real comfortable for my guard. I was able to get into a lot of strong positions, uh, you know, some omoplatas, some sweeping positions, but he had a really good base. And, um, you know, he kind of like slowed me down there a little bit. And so the match was staying tight, but I never like felt like I was getting behind or anything, but it was, it was staying close because I had a hard time sweeping him. And we kind of like ended up in a little bit of a stalemate where I was underneath him working to sweep him and he was just like basing out really well and, and giving me a hard time. Uh, but but then finally I almost got him down and I got an advantage and then we were back on the feet and uh, you know so there was like a moment okay well I gotta make sure I don't get taken down you know and uh, uh, lose because he you know took me down at the very end so um, you know I pulled guard smart made sure he didn't uh, get a chance to take me down and then we had a couple more scrambles at the very end um, and uh, pretty much like the match, let's see, we scrambled, we ended up back, we ended up out of bounds, we ended up back on the feet, and there was only a few seconds left, and, you know, I just kind of kept him away, and, and won with one advantage, so that was the closest match, you know, and, and in a bracket like that, with so many people, there's always going to be those complicated matches, you know, not so much where, you know, it's like, it's the style matchup, you know, anyone can beat anyone, there's those guys that have the, you uh, uh, you know, just that style that can that can neutralize your game and make it hard for you. You know, so that that's one of the things you always deal with in in big divisions. And I knew he was going to be a tougher match just because of his base and his strength and and everything. Um, you know, he, he was going to try to keep it really close and then maybe get a takedown and win with like a takedown or something like that. So uh, you know, obviously I would have liked to have win with you know more dominance, but. But I was, okay, I'm, ha I'm happy. I made it out of there, you know, I'm still alive. And uh, I, got, I got one of the more complicated matches out of the way, and now I'm in the semifinals, you know. And it was taking a long time, you know. So that was my third match. And, you know, w the, by that time, we were, it's probably been around two and a half to three hours of, you know, fighting and, you know, waiting, because they were doing it on two mats, you know, and getting this page down to the last guys, getting this page down to the last guys. And, and um, you know, so it had been taking a long time. Uh, and, you know, it was funny. So then, like, due to the schedule and how long it was taking, they started the, the, the children competitors, um, the juveniles and, and the, even the younger kids, like the 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, you know, super cute, you know, but uh, it was it was just swarming with kids in the in this little warm up area. But I, I really liked it, um, you know, because I was looking at some of these teenagers and, and, you know, I started thinking back to whenever I was a teenager and I was competing in Brazil and, you know, I was just a, a young blue belt kid. And, you know, and I remember like looking at the black belts in the warm area at the world's you know whenever i was fighting the juvenile and just being like wow you know i'm back here next to these guys and and so i was looking at all these kids and i was seeing them line up you know and they're um you know going out and doing the matches and man some of those kids were looking really awesome you know and uh, it just it just gave me a big smile and just gave me this kind of special feeling where it's like almost deja vu seeing them like like I can remember being them, you know, being in that position 
and now here I am. And it just, it just fueled me even more, you know? And, um, and so, you know, I, like I said, I was in this zone and I was just so inspired and really like, I felt this unstoppable feeling almost like I was like glowing. Like literally I felt like, um, uh, you know, just supercharged, like, like I was, uh, super, like a superhuman being <laughs> for a second. I mean, it was, it was crazy. And, uh, you know, like I've had some experiences with, you know, the visualization and, and auto suggestion, which is a, is a tool that I, I use to help myself block out any negative thought and just stay focused on positive. And so basically I tell myself, um, certain things over and over again in my head, um, you know, only positive things and, you know, it, it helps keep me in my zone and, um, and it just blocks out all negative, you know, so I don't, I never say anything about being tired or, or, uh, you know, this guy's really good. Like, you know, I'm, got to be careful watch out it's just all like okay i'm in my zone no one's going to stop me you know this is just like training at home i'm in my zone like all my positions are, are firing off perfectly no one's going to stop me just stuff like that like where i'm just, just keeping myself really positive and so i've had some experience experiences with that in the past where you really feel like you're in control you're in control of everything and you start to realize that it's going to happen, you know, that you're, you're going to come out on top. You're going to win. This is meant to happen. And I started getting that feeling. And um, so, you know, going into my semifinal, that was the last match of the day because I saved the finals for the next day. And um, I was going against a really tough opponent, someone I competed against before, um, Alexandre, Alexandro uh, Sacconi. And uh, he's another really tough guy on top. Um, you know, he, former Brazilito champion. In fact, he's won Brazilito twice, and he was also a, a world's medalist in his weight class and in the absolute. He's medaled in the absolute at the worlds. Um, you know, so he's one of the top guys out there. And you know, I knew it was my last match of the day, so it was almost like the finals of the day. You know, I can just go hard in this one. And uh, you know, I actually didn't even know who he, was going to be my semifinal um, because at that point. There was four winners of each of the four pages of the bracket. And so I didn't know who was going to be matched up against the other winner of the page. And so I was like asking, okay, who am I going to go against? And then they started telling me I was going to face Evangelista. And uh, and then I didn't realize I was going to go against Sacconi until right before um, Nivaldo and Evangelista faced each other. So they, they took them out into the mat. And so, okay, so I'm facing Sacconi. And uh, so I got I got real excited for that because I had faced Sacconi before and it was always like super close matches and I really wanted to to put a statement on this one. So um, last match of the day, you know, after like over four hours, you know, of this absolute and just feeling super good, I wanted to finish off right and uh, go out there and, you know, play my game really smooth, got to my guard, swept him, um, you know, Started getting my passing going. He was doing some leg lasso. Um, I did a good job of not falling into that. Forced a half and used my side smash. One, two, three, boom, I'm in mount. Um, but it was funny because I mounted him and I was like, I'm all right, this was textbook for me. You know, it was like my system to the T, right where I want to be. But he like did some sneaky like reach around under my gi, like, like through my skin, you know came through here and like did some crazy grip. And I didn't realize he was doing that as I was mounting him. And uh, and so I get mount, I'm like, time to finish this off. And next thing you know, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm stuck in something here. And I'm like, <clears throat> kind of choking. And I'm like, oh, no way am I gonna fall into some, you know, tricky thing. You know what I mean? Like those, uh, those moves that everyone gets caught in once. You know what I mean? And then they never get caught in again. I'm like, that's not happening right now. And so I kind of like used my hands to to defend and then it made it really easy for him to roll me over. You know, so now I'm back on bottom. Once he was in my guard, he couldn't choke me anymore because of my legs. So he let go of that, but then he's back in my guard. So now I got to sweep him again. So boom, boom, we work and I sweep him again. And um, 
and I didn't get any of my mount points or pass points because I was in like a, a choke. So I was only up 2-0 after that. But then I sweep him again, ended up getting in a scramble where I end up on his back. He kind of shakes me off of his back and we roll and I'm on top. And then uh, I pass and I felt him kind of, kind of give out, you know, and uh, I pass. So I immediately attack Kimura, finish the day with the Kimura and felt really good. And uh, so that was the end of day one. Back to the hotel, recover, come back, day two. Um, you know, I start off with the weight class um, in the morning. And, uh, you know, so I submitted my first guy with another Kimura, uh, passed his guard and, and submitted him. Um, and then I faced uh, Demetrius Souza from Alliance. And I, I, I put the match on my Facebook, you know. Um, I, you know, I, I, I made a mistake, like, I, he pulled guard and I felt good. I was doing good, but he had my leg wrapped up pretty, pretty deep. And he ended up like pulling me into a 50 50. And as I tried to escape the 50 50, he spun around to my back and, um, and he ended up sweeping me with it. And so, you know, I was down by two, which is never good. Um, but I swept him right back almost immediately. And in, in that transition, I also, he also gave me his back. And, uh, and I didn't even go for his back right away. Like I kind of did at first, but then I took my hook out and stabilized him on his butt so I could get my two points, but I never got it. I waited like almost 10 seconds and I never got it. And then I just put my hook in and I started for his back. I never got my sweet points. I almost finished him with the choke, uh, but he did a really good job. Like he was defending really well there um, and he was staying on his belly. And so, I could never get both my hooks in, and then he was laying to where when I would try to feed the, the collar, my underarm, he was squeezing and laying on it, so I could never like feed it all the way. It would always get stuck right here by his ribs, and then I'd try to pull it out, and it, and it would get stuck, and then I kept switching, and I was a little flustered, you know, because I'm on his back, but I, I, I'm losing, you know, and uh, I couldn't decide if I really wanted to choke him or, or just try to get points, and I had like... I almost mounted him, I almost had both hooks, like a couple times I almost had the hooks, but it was like one, two, three, he'd scramble out. And so I didn't get points, I kept getting advantages, advantage, advantage. And uh, almost mounted, then I had a, a body triangle, and then, you know, I spent like four or five minutes there, and then uh, I'm still losing. And so I just kind of like, I kind of wanted to look for a calf slice to roll, and I just kind of changed position, I just let him kind of almost just get out. And then I, he gets back out to half guard, and I look up again, and I'm like, okay, maybe now I'm gonna get my two points, because now I'm on top, top, you know? And I just another advantage. And so I'm like, ugh. And I'm looking, and I'm like, man. And then boom, he puts me in 50-50 again, and uh, the match ends with me in 50-50. So I lose 2-0. I, I was just kinda like, really, you know? But okay, you know, it's like, it sounds bad, but you know, when you go to Brazil, that stuff happens. <laughs> I'll just say that, you know. It's happened to me before, you know, and in fact, the last time I went to the Brazil in 2010, I made the absolute finals, and then the next day, I lost a really bad decision that I didn't think I lost, but. So, it was almost like deja vu, you know. It's like, okay, this has happened, but, you know, whatever. I didn't get smashed. I did my game. I felt good. I almost submitted him, too. I'm still in my zone. I'm not going to let it bother me. I have the absolute finals, and I'm not going to miss this opportunity, you know. And so it didn't really affect me too much. I immediately got my focus, but I was, like, even more, like, you know, angry. I'm like, all right, I'm going to submit. I need to submit this guy, you know, because anything else, you never know what's going to happen, you know. And, uh, you know, so it's absolute finals time, and I'm, I was literally, like, smiling before the final. Like, I almost couldn't control it, you know? I have my music, I'm saying my, my stuff in my head, and I just, I kind of like, started like smiling. I just knew my, an, another special moment was right there in front of me, and all I had to do was just go take it, you know? And, uh, and just perform, just go, just play, just forget about everything else, just open my game and just go. 
And I knew it was going to be a hard match. You know, Evangelista was on fire. He, he defeated Noguera and Nivaldo. And then he just won his division. He defeated Kavaka. No one had beat him yet the whole weekend. And, uh, and I had faced him before, but he has gotten, he's gotten even bigger. And he started, like, getting a lot better, too. Like, he started beating a lot of good guys and giving guys hard, hard matches. So, you know, I, I knew it was going to be tough. But I knew I had the, the, the style in the game for, for, for him. Um, and, uh, you know, so I was like literally smiling. I was like, all right, let's go take it, you know. And, and it's time to go. And, you know, I exchanged some grips with him. Ended up pulling guard. Um, he was breaking a lot of grips. So it was like keeping me from, from attacking. And uh, took me a little bit to get into a good position. Um, got underneath him, got my sweep, started up by two. So that's always good, you know, and, uh, try to do a little bit of pressure, started getting into my positions, but I allowed him to get like a, a De La Hiva. He's really tall. He's a big guy. And he kind of hooked my leg and then he was able to scramble back up. So we're back on the feet again, which I didn't, I wasn't too happy about that, but, um, you know, so I, I felt comfortable for my guard. So I pull again. And uh, he did a much better job the second time around. Um, you know, there was a, a bit of uh, some exchange and he managed to get underneath me. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure how, how heavy he is, but he's big. He's probably like 230-ish, something like that. You know, he's ultra heavy. Um, and he got underneath me really well and stacked me pretty hard. And, uh, you know, I'm comfortable in those positions. I didn't want to have to go to my knees, but he kept getting more under my hip, more under my hip. And then he pushed me over to my knees. And so then he tries to take my back. So he went to take my back. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm really known for my, like, having a good guard, like, hard to pass, you know. And uh, maybe not really known for good defense. Like, necessarily, like, if someone's on my back, being able to get out of stuff like that. Like, you know, Haja, you see, escape very well. Shanji. And, uh, and it's been something that I've been working on. And, uh, you know, so he was on my back and I felt this moment to do this escape that I've been working on. And, you know, so we kind of had some rolling, but, you know, I wasn't, it was like one of those things like that you're not happy about, but then you're happy about. So I was happy that I stay composed and I was very, um, you know, my mind was still like, okay, I'm going to defend this boom, 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 and then I, I shook him off, you know, and I, I defended the back well. But then, of course, on the other hand, I made a mistake, and I don't want people to be able to try to take my back. So um, I know what I need to work on there. But on the other hand, I was very happy that I was composed there, and I got him off my back, no problem. And I'm back on top. I landed on top out of it. And at that point, I knew his will was going to be a little more broke. That was, like, his best chance to, to come back and win. And so I started putting some good pressure again, and boom, cross knee pass uh, with the cross collar grip, one of my favorites, right in position, immediately attacked his arm and finished off with the Kimura in the finals. And from that point, it was just, I mean, I, you know, very emotional for me. Uh, you know, I was just like, you know, I, I envisioned it so much. And the absolute, you know, absolute was, you know, something that I wanted so bad. Um, you know, the last time I was in Brazil in 2010, I made it to the absolute finals, but I lost um, to Bernardo Faria. And, you know, I like, I wanted that so bad. It's been something that I'd never done, you know, out of my whole career, all the major competitions, all the years of competing at the lower belts, every belt, I have never won a major absolute title, you know, major like European Pan, Brazilian or Worlds. I never won an absolute title. I'd medaled twice at the Pan as a black belt, tw uh, twice at the Europeans as a black belt. You know, this was my second time in the finals of the absolute in Brazil as a black belt. At the lower belts, at the Worlds, I made it to finals in blue belt, you know, and a bunch of other belts. You know, I've been there, but I never won. And, uh, you know, like, the way it came together and everything and the way I was playing my game and, you know, when it all, when it just, when it happened, it was just like, yes, 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 you know, I finally did it. I finally did it. And, um, you know, and I did it in Brazil, you know, and it was just a dream come true. 
my first absolute title in a major tournament at any belt, you know, and it was black belt. So I got to make history as the first non-Brazilian to win a major black belt absolute title um, at any of the, the major competitions. And I did it in Brazil. You know, it was uh, it was pretty dead quiet. <laughs> I got a couple, you know, like that. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, I think everyone could see my, my will, my passion, and my heart out there. And, uh, you know, I it started in 1999, you know, to get to that point. Started in 1999 when I was 16 years old, my very first time to go to Brazil, you know, and I lost my first match, you know. All these years, it took all those experiences, all those losses, all those temporary failures to get to that point, to win on that day and and be in that kind of zone where I wasn't going to let anyone stop me. And, uh, you know, it was something I'll never forget. And, you know, like for me, that just embodies what I try to, to do for others because I've lost a lot in my career and, you know, been through all the obstacles and hardships of trying to learn and get better living here in Oklahoma. And, you know, one of my, my favorite quotes, it is my favorite quote, it's in my gi, you know, on the back, on the bottom right here. Uh, it's on my shirt, you know, the one that quote that I really try to live by, victory is always possible for the person who refuses to stop fighting. And that's it. I mean, just the same as a black belt is a white belt who never quit. If you never quit, if you keep trying, and you keep working and you don't let any temporary failures or defeats stop you, you're gonna have your moment. You know, you're, it's gonna come no matter what situation you're in, how talented or specially skilled you are, naturally, you know, naturally skilled. It doesn't matter if you put the work in and you don't, you know, you keep your mind focused and you don't let any, any of those temporary failures stop you, you're gonna get there no matter what. Eventually it's gonna happen. And uh, it took me 14 years to finally get that absolute title. But I did it and brought that home to Oklahoma for my academy, my team, make history, hopefully inspire more um, Americans and non-Brazilians in general, uh, you know, to never quit and, and keep working to, to accomplish their goals and dreams.